This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon and welcome to Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks for joining us. Likeable Science is all about how science is a vital, dynamic, and interesting part of everyone's life, not just scientists. And here today in the Think Tech studio to help me explore this are two people. Elena Farden from Kamehameha Schools. Welcome, Hello. Elena. Thank you. And Dr. Helen Turner from Chaminade University. Welcome, Hi, Helen. Ethan. Great to be here. Thank you. But, well, thanks to both of you. What we're going to be exploring today is, is a really innovative partnership that mm -hmm. your two organizations have going. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe uh, sort of at the heart of it lies this Halau Inana space. Maybe you can start out, uh, Elena, telling us a little bit about, about that. Sure. So Halau Inana Makapa'akea is in Mo'ili'ili, and it really started off as a, a place of need. And then the momentum behind it kind of drove it towards transformation. So we've been working with some of our community colleges on their nursing pathway and their native Hawaiian plant stem pathway. And they needed an extra space to grow their native Hawaiian plants. So they came to us and we went to our commercial real estate division to say, is there any space within Honolulu that we could possibly use to help expand their native Hawaiian plant garden? So we looked at Mo'ili'ili, it was an asset that was underperforming, and when I say underperforming, it was um, closed, it was a lot of graffiti and um, just unused space. So we took that space, renovated it, and we added a rooftop garden, and that was really the genesis of what happened. And the transformation part that came after that was really this momentum behind how do we add partnerships with our educational partners, how do we add partnerships with our community? And that's really how Halau Inana came to be as it is today. Excellent, excellent. And so Helen Shamanad got involved in this. We did, we did. And I mean, I think the first thing to say is you would not recognize the, the space, the, this graffiti-ridden place. It is a beautiful space. It's a collaborative learning environment. It is chock-filled with technology. Um, modular learning spaces for students and community members. And I guess with, with Shamanad coming in as one of the lead partners along with University of Hawaii, Kamehameha Schools and the Moonshot Incubator, for us it was about connecting science to community. So at Shamanad, you know, you know, big part of our mission is testing everything we do against what does Hawaii need? And, and we know we need programs in healthcare, we need, know we need programs in sustainability, we know we need programs in business and social justice. And yet making, as a higher education institution, making that link to community, actually sitting face to face with them, is sometimes quite hard to do, especially, you know, because of being, it's an ivory tower, right? What Halal and Nana does is it provides us with a space where community, academia, students, learners, um, and also, you know, people who are running organizations, there's a lot of leadership figures involved in Halal and Nana, they can all come together and kind of coalesce around mm -hmm. those big themes and big questions that, that confront Hawaii. It, it's incredibly exciting to us. It's great. It's a very innovative form of learning where you have learners at all level, right? Mm -hmm. From the kids who are supposedly there as the learners to the mm -hmm. adults actually That's running right. it who are also learners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. That's, um, so maybe to give the audience a little better sense of this, what kinds of programs happen there? Sure, maybe I'll start off mm -hmm. and then I'll yeah. hand it over to Helen. It's a long list, right? Yeah, it is a long list. Yeah. So some of the, the, th the three main focus areas that we've been looking at for programming for Halau Inana to be a very intentional space is we're looking at three strands. So OEV leadership, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, and innovation. So within those three strands, we've had several different types of programming from Moonshot Lab that's using innovation and entrepreneurship with high school, from Altino Coding that's teaching our DOE and our immersion school faculty how to use coding in the classroom for all disciplines, to innovation, you know, working with Shamanad and UH Manoa in the different programmings that they're doing. So it's been a, a wide gap and a wide span of learners from our keiki all the way to our post high and adult learners. Mm -hmm. And some very, mm -hmm. very informal, less structured situations, some very tightly more organized then? Mm -hmm. I think some of it is a little bit more um, collaborative. Okay. Some things happen by accident, and we love that to have that space. Mm -hmm. 
but the accents that happen end up becoming this mm -hmm. innovation, sure. you know, or, or something different than we had intended. Mm -hmm. um, other programming that we've had are, are networking events. How do we connect our learners that want to go into these fields with mentors or business leaders that are already in those fields? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you, got, you have to have a space, uh, an event, whatever, to give them a, a chance to come together, right? Yeah, or find out what's not going on right. there in the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that, that learning, sort of accidental learning, is a really incredible mm -hmm. and, and a powerful thing. I used to uh, work at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, and we had a prototype room mm -hmm. where we would run right. initial sets of exhibits right. and would learn a lot. But it was sometimes the accidents that proved the most powerful. Mm -hmm. So one exhibit we were getting ready to prototype, and the last minute it came up, we have no stools, we have no chairs. Mm -hmm. What are we gonna do? <laughs> Crisis, well, yeah. the only thing we have was some benches. Okay, we'll put benches there. And it turned mm -hmm. these e exhibit experiences into collaborative experiences. Mm -hmm. Two and three people mm -hmm. would sit on the bench and work together on these, which we never even thought about. Wow, and it was right. just, you know, it really changed the whole character of it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I like what you say about those, watching out for those to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent. So where, uh, where are you really taking this? Where, where, is this? where is this going? I mean, it's bringing diverse groups together. Uh -huh. Well, so, so for us, you know, I think that it, it is a vehicle for us to connect, you know, to the community. Um, we're bringing primarily at the moment STEM education uh, uh, activities into the space. Mm -hmm. um, but we also have a lot of opportunities for our own students to come and interact in that space as peer leaders, as mentors. And you're going to hear some of that um, for the I'm a Scientist after a break. But we also, you know, the connection to culture is an incredibly important part of it for us as well. So at Chaminade, we're a native Hawaiian serving institution. More and more native Hawaiian students every year are choosing us for their college education. And particularly in the STEM disciplines, that creates a lot of responsibility for us to think about how our students both of science and of culture, right? And so you know, the Kumarin Residence Program, Halau Anana, the Board and Stone classes, these amazing cultural experiences that let our students, you know, interact with the space as both Hawaiians and as scientists. And to learn, you know, the immense richness of Hawaiian culture and what that brings into their future development as scientists as well. Um, that's, a, that's a big piece of it for us. And we recently were able to secure um, a couple of grants from the National Science Foundation Excellent. that really let us expand that programming and figure out models that, that connect science and traditional culture that might be applicable elsewhere. So there are those kind of um, synergies for us. And then just being involved in the leadership group Every two weeks, we get to sit down at a table with our colleagues from UH Manoa, colleagues from KS, colleagues from Moonshot Lab, and there are th projects and, and things that develop from that that were perhaps, you know, the accidental consequences, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, you know, I think where it can go from our perspective is only on to, you know, greater and better things, touching more learners, bringing more community together and providing more and more of a vehicle for our students to connect to community. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And I think where we see it going is we like to outgrow the space. And what I mean yeah. by that is we're using this space as a pilot to really see, to pressure test what does an innovation mm -hmm. space look like in the community? Mm -hmm. You know, what are the needs of the groups? What are the facility needs or equipment needs? And once we learn those things, now how do we outgrow the space and build it bigger or right. build it elsewhere mm -hmm. or replicate it in mm -hmm. other regions? You know? mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. And People think of science as being something that is sort of devoid of culture or separate mm -hmm. from culture, but it isn't. It springs from culture, it's supported by the culture it lives in. And, right. and it's great to hear you're talking about that. Uh, the, mm -hmm. Certainly, in the other project that Helen and I are involved in, the, the mm -hmm. Ikivai project, we look back and see the Hawaiians had a deep understanding of the value of water, the need to control the fresh water on the surface, in the ground, and mm -hmm. good technologies to, to do this. And mm -hmm. we sort of have forgotten those, or lost track of them, right, right. or and overrode them. You know, I think the connection between science and culture, we, we spend a lot of time thinking about that at Chaminade, and I, I think there's sort of two dimensions to it that we, we've identified. One is that no student should have to leave their culture behind to become a scientist, 
you know, that, 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 that then creates barriers that just don't need to be there. And that's not just common to Native Hawaiian students. That, you know, is part of the issue with the level of underrepresentation we have in science nationally, globally. Mm -hmm. But the other piece of it is also how can incorporating culture, and this I think is a nuttier problem, but it's one that we really work on, how can that actually make you a better scientist? Mm -hmm. So Dr. Jolene Cogbill, who you're going to meet um, this after, after the break, you know, she's doing some things in her classes where doing craft-like activities, making nets, doing cordage, that can make you a better scientist. That can make you more precise, more able to concentrate, mm -hmm. better follow through, all those skills that we normally teach, mm -hmm. but in a very abstracted, kind of westernized way. And, uh, you know, so, so th we spend a lot of time thinking about that. I don't think mm -hmm. we're there yet, but there's a lot of interesting stuff along the way. Yeah, and it's really important to integrate that so the students mm -hmm. feel and understand that connection. Mm -hmm. So yes, as you said, they're not having to leave mm -hmm. stuff behind, but, but they see right. these skills I learned that maybe my grandparents taught me. Mm -hmm. Oh, they have they're applicability value. now. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they mean something. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're, yeah. yeah, and it makes science less abstract. Right. Right, and yeah. less of a kind of a thing that oh, people what, like that do, right? It's, right, it's, this it's, is why it fits yeah. in so well to the theme of the show. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Makes it more likable. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, what have you learned so far from this? I mean, it's it's, it's only been going on for what? For a third year. Third year. Okay. Wow. Oh, so, exactly. I think some of the things that we've learned, um, just being part of the innovation space, is understanding the different needs of our partners. Mm -hmm. um, each of them come with something different to the table. Mm -hmm. How do we address those? Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing that we've learned um, as an organization for Kamehameha Schools is our communication and our readiness. Mm -hmm. um, it's very different for us to take the back seat and not be the direct programmers. So we have to be in that supportive role. And it's a new role that we have to learn. And I think that's part of the learning mm -hmm. process and it's a, been a very enjoyable one. Mm -hmm. The other part is just communication. What are our, our absolute mm -hmm. goals? What are we trying to aim for? What are those successes that, and bright spots that we're looking for? And are we communicating those enough and well enough to our right. partners? Mm -hmm. So that our work really overlaps. It's not an add-on to what Shamana does yeah. or UH yeah. does. It's something that we all do together. Exactly, that's a, one of the key uh, central press of really a successful sort of collective impact partnership, mm -hmm. right, is that everyone understand each other very clearly and mm -hmm. so when you use a word your partners understand mm -hmm. it, it's sort, sort of like the term inquiry that mm -hmm. got started being used well well in science and then gradually came to mean anything that anyone wanted it to mean <laughs> right, right. until it became almost useless mm -hmm. to, to you, yeah. you've got to define sort of define your terms <laughs> be sure everyone's in sync with common goals mm -hmm. understanding yes that Helen's role is different from your role mm -hmm. that you've got to right. you bring different strengths uh, different constraints, mm -hmm. but all of them together build this synergy that's really, you can accomplish a lot more, right? Definitely. And um, I, I liked your comment, by the way, about being, learning to be a follower, I mean, because <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that's, that's a critical skill, right? Mm -hmm. You can't mm -hmm. all lead all the time in yeah. everything, right? You have yeah. to, you have to be willing to, to follow at times. And the partners are learning too, so, mm -hmm. you know, what have we learned? We've learned there's a lot of appetite out there for the kind of informal science education programs we have that you're going to hear more mm -hmm. about. Um, again, maybe prompting us to need to do some capacity building there. Um, I think we've learned the value of the third place. So the Starbucks CEO, right, he always talked about this idea that Starbucks is a third place in people's lives. You've got home, you've got work, you've got this third place. <laughs> And I think for a university to think about a third place as a learning environment and what kind of program we need to offer in those spaces that might be very different from the way we've done business for the last, you know, 800 years of academia, right? <laughs> and, and so I think that's been very valuable to us. And with our new president coming on board and thinking about how do we get Chaminade's education into the community in modes that the community wants from us. There we go. Right. The, I mean, Halau Anana really was, was very forward-looking for right. us in, in starting us getting, getting thinking along those lines. Hey, well, this is so exciting. I, I hate to cut us off, but uh, the powers that be are telling me we're, we're coming to a break, and your colleagues want to get their chance to talk about some firsthand uh, experience in these programs. Elena Farden, Helen Turner, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so and uh, we'll be right back after a break. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music.
so any chance you play at all, you know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah. I saw it. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. Hello, I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha! And welcome back to Applicable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here at ThinkTech. And uh, you may notice we've changed guests here in the middle of the show. We now have uh, Dr. Jolene Cogmill, uh, who's an assistant professor of biology in the Ho'u program. Yes. Uh, Chaminade, right? Yes. And uh, Cassandra Song, Hello. who is a, uh, mm -hmm. a, 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 a an alumnus of the yeah. same program, <laughs> now an instructor in the program, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. So w welcome to the show, Thank and you. it's great to have you. So we talked last time, or the last half, sort of about the big, almost a 20,000 foot view uh, of this, the partnership, the chaos channel partnership, the, the, the space, but you guys live this and breathe it, yeah. right, mm -hmm. on, on much more a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, tell, tell me a little bit about, first off, I guess, what is this Ho'ulu program? Well, the Ho'ulu program is the partnership between Chaminade and Kamehameha Schools where we have been able to offer up to, at this point, I believe we have 60 Native Hawaiian students in the STEM fields. And if they are accepted to the program, they get four years of their tuition paid for. Wow. In addition to that, there's a whole bunch of other services that come with the Ho'ulu program. So the goal of the Ho'ulu program is to really train Native Hawaiians in STEM, right? Excellent. And and explore what it means to be a Native Hawaiian in a STEM field and bring culture to the science. Uh -huh. So we do that, hopefully, with uh, <laughs> allowing them to really focus, right? They don't have to worry about working. They mm -hmm. get a full ride. We also have a full wraparound, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Advising for the students Excellent. so that they get checked in regularly. We have cultural events for them so that they can learn more about their culture. And those who have don't know much, because we have students who come from the mainland, mm -hmm. they get to learn about it. Those who know their culture, came from Kamehameha schools, and have had it part of their everyday life, mm -hmm. they miss it when they come to college. And so mm -hmm. this is a way for them to keep it. Right, and this is uh, what Helen was saying in the last half about being sure that learning STEM does not mean you're putting right. your culture aside, but, but it's much more trying to integrate them. Mm -hmm. So you can probably tell us a little bit about how successful that's been. Yeah, this is a, an amazing scholarship. It's so much different than the other ones that we had because, um, as Dr. Cogbill said, we've, we're required to check in weekly about how we were doing, and it, was, it makes such a difference knowing that some, there's someone there listening to you um, for concerns outside of the classroom, you know. So I think that's really helped with the success of the, the scholarship as well. But, um, yeah, we've had programs where we go to... Um, community outreach for teaching science into, you know, places that don't usually have it. And um, we visit Lo'i's and we just do a bunch of um, cultural volunteering that I never had. <laughs> so it was, it was really beneficial to me. So. Well, great. And that gives you a, yeah. a much richer sense of science. It's mm -hmm. not just something you walk off and do in a lab, right? It's, right? it's part of the community you live in and part of the community that you came from. You're mm -hmm. giving back. You're, you're also taking the knowledge from that mm -hmm. and incorporating it. Yeah, that, that's absolutely. Really, yeah. So, and I, I know you've had um, 
various diverse groups uh, come through, as well as beyond the Ho'olu. Mm -hmm. uh, you also do this I am a scientist program, yes. right? Yes. And, um, that is something we are very, very proud of. Right. Um, Lori Shimoda, who mm -hmm. is the really innovator behind I'm a Scientist and who does all of the on the ground, planning it, organizing it, coming up with new science modules, mm -hmm. um, has taken this and just really grown it. And so it's a program that services What's the youngest group we've done? First, First grade. Mm -hmm. um, and, and more normally through middle school, though I think we've had high school a few times okay. too, mm -hmm. where we'll go out to their schools, but we've also had them on campus. Girl mm -hmm. Scouts has come and done things. Um, those students who are, they get taught at home. Mm -hmm. That's the word I'm looking for. Homeschooled? The homeschooled mm -hmm. kids. We have programs for them as well mm -hmm. so that they can come on campus and be in the university labs. Mm -hmm. and. It allows us to make science fun and introduce science at a young age so that they, science isn't scary. It's something you do and it's right. something that's hands-on and it's fun. And our students, and the Ho'ulu students especially, we really encourage them to make this part of their daily outreach. Like they're, that's what we have them do as their volunteerism for the program. Yeah, it, it's, it's so valuable. Uh, some of us grew up in environments where science wasn't really foreign, where it was sort of something you knew about. And, right. But there's lots of people who didn't. And <clears throat> if they don't establish that I identity, that in engagement with science, they'll never really pick up on science, right. never really understand and appreciate and enjoy mm -hmm. science as a, as a, see right. it as, as it, a way to learn. It's something way. that's like higher thinking. Right. And really, it's what we all do right. Right. every day. Exactly. It's part of our daily life. Exactly. People don't realize, but the problem-solving skills we all have, you know, when when you go and turn on the light switch and the light doesn't go on, you don't start praying to the light gods, right? <laughs> right. You, you either check the bulb or check the switch or check right. the plug. I mean, there's a set of rational, logical right. of processes that are basically fundamentally science. science. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were talking a little bit about the, the broader support beyond sort of the, the academics per se, and I, I think that's probably... Uh, Particularly important for for kids who come into this not from a sort of a, yeah. a, a privileged academic kind of background. Yeah. Um, well, I'm I was a first generation college student, okay. and so I struggled a lot when I first came mm -hmm. in. Um, this the support I got from the whole Ulu scholarship it was invaluable to me already because I would come in and talk to Dr. Cogbill. I was like, you know, I'm having trouble with this. I don't know what to do. And then she would just give me all these. Um, resources I, that were available to me that I wouldn't have known otherwise. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I missed that with other um, uh, scholarships that I've had before, you know, that wasn't so involved. Because mm -hmm. at first you think, oh, I have to fill out a survey every week, tell you how my day was, how many hours I studied. And I was like, oh. But it was, it was nice because I was able to self-reflect and think, oh, maybe I didn't do well because I didn't study enough. And then Dr. Cogbill would talk to me about it the next week. And they do that with every scholar. And they know all of them by name. And it's just, it's very, it's more like a, a family and, and like that's helping you get to the next step. So it's, it's very nice. The goal is to support them at every level. Sure. So, you know, just not, fin not just financial. Right. So we have students, I, I never expected as a professor to know so much personally about my students <laughs> as I do. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about the Whole Ulu program is we do get to know them as, as people. Mm -hmm. They come in just to tell us about their day. Mm -hmm. You know, it might not be academic stress. It might be stuff that they're having with their siblings or their parents or their boyfriends. Right. I, I have a lot more conversations about that than I ever thought I would. <laughs> um, and so it, it's not meant to be invasive. And I think that we have succeeded. And when we do these weekly check-ins, they do see it as someone wants to hear about my day and right. they care, right. you know, and it's not just, did you do your work? Oh, right. you didn't show up, so right. now there's a consequence. Right. It's but, more, we well, didn't show up, what can we do to help you? Mm -hmm. But it also provides rich data that is gonna allow the program to continue to grow, to learn, you know, what is the important thing? Is it the number of hours that the students mm -hmm. are spending studying? Is it the number of social events they go mm -hmm. to? Right. Is it you know, what the, the fact that they get to meet and intermingle with other students from similar backgrounds. You know, are, which of these 
is sort of more important. It's going to be yeah, interesting yeah. to find out. We've just this is the beginning of our second year, mm -hmm. and so we are still growing and mm -hmm. adding new things. We just we're fortunate enough to hire a cultural enrichment specialist mm -hmm. um, who is helping us bring more cultural to, into the program. Mm -hmm. You know, the goal is really to make sure that this is not just money. You're not right. just here to go to school with money. You're here to learn everything about yourself to make you a better contributor to society. Exactly. You know, and we try to provide as many enrichment opportunities as possible. Actually, we were able to take Cassie to a conference last fall. November. Uh -huh. On the mainland, we went to Tampa for that conference, mm -hmm. that annual biomedical minorities and research conference. And um, I think, she, I mean, it was just for her to explore all the opportunities mm -hmm. that are out in science. And sure. I'm taking two freshmen and a sophomore Hulu student this mm -hmm. semester to another one called the uh, SACNIS. Oh, yes. Um, and, well, it was, it was greatly beneficial to me because before I went to the conference, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then going there and speaking to grad students and mm -hmm. faculty and grad school recruiters, mm -hmm. people that are just in the science field, it, it made it seem more attainable to me. And mm -hmm. so I came back just determined I'm going to apply to grad school and like and see where that goes. So it gave me a, a pathway. And it was because of the whole loose scholarship was able to take me. Yeah, so. that's... <laughs> it's so important, and to sort of follow up on that, uh, I know, I don't know whether you have as part of yours, but the research experience for undergraduate yes. kind of program. We do. So yeah, you may think, I want to go into physiology, and you go into a physiology lab, and it's going to be, you hate it. Yeah. And that's great, because then you haven't spent two or three years mm -hmm. as a graduate student right. learning that you hate it. Yeah. Uh, if you've discovered early, and you may <laughs> decide, hey, I want to go into molecular you know, mm -hmm. physics or whatever instead. Yeah. This could obviously go on for <laughs> forever and ever, uh, but but our time is drawing near. So I'm going to just have to say, real quick, 15 seconds advice for students. Don't be afraid to explore and try. You know you can do it. All you have to do is put your mind to it and find the right mentors to support you. Ask a lot of questions. Ask everybody you know. <laughs> just talk about it. Perfect. So. Perfect. Try and ask. I like it. <laughs> Try and ask. So that wraps up another uh, episode of Likeable Science. Thank you, Jolene. Thank you for uh, having us. Thank you, Cassandra. Thank you. And uh, best of luck, and, and mm -hmm. we shall uh, see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>